Unlike a clear lake, the Malay Peninsula retains its purity. What does it mean? I learned what it means to abide by the law of nature from those who preserve their ethnic spirit and roots. Today, I plan to discover the charms of this peninsula, surrounded three-fourths by the sea. People look into the depths of what lies inside this marvelous natural environment. and enjoy the romance in their own ways. Numerous islands are spread out like a panorama under the sky to become a dreamlike world. I invite you to this romantic paradise. To backpackers, the Malay Peninsula is called Sing Ma Thai, short for Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. Today I'm starting in Langkawi, which is located somewhere in the middle of the 1,100 kilometer Sing Ma Thai Railway. Langkawi is located in northwestern Malaysia and touches the border with Thailand. It is an archipelago made up of 104 islands. The total area of the Langkawi archipelago is 526 square kilometers and is similar in size to Gajedo Island in Korea. All of the islands are listed as UNESCO World Natural Heritage Sites. My first stop in Langkawi is the Oriental Village, the heart of the district. Tourists have recommended this place unanimously as a must-see destination. The price for an adult ticket is 80 ringgits, which is about 26 US dollars. The distance to the peak is 2.2 kilometers. Ordinarily, as the elevation gets higher, the forest density decreases, but apparently not in Mount Mat Sin Chang, the highest mountain in Langkawi. <laughs> The thick trees have grown year by year, maintaining the forests. These tropical rainforests make up 65% of Langkawi's total area. There are two observation decks. I transfer to another cable car and arrive at an observation deck located 700 meters above sea level. Wow. The distinction between sky and sea are gone from the landscape. This is what it must be like to feel purely liberated. It's said that you can even see islands of Thailand on a clear day. But that bit of disappointment disappears with this magnificent view. I can now see why people said this is the first place I should visit. However, 
it has only been 27 years since this vast expanse of life has been exposed to the world. Apparently, Langkawi has its own special story. Before I take a look at each separate island, I decide to quench my curiosity about this story first. What wants to be inside yeah. the gallery? Yeah. This one uh, we call Adatu Pukamajaya, mm -hmm. the or chief of Langkawi, mm -hmm. and then uh, her wife, Mahora. Mm -hmm. Masuri, you must to die, mm -hmm. and then after the kill, mm -hmm. the white ball inside, uh, mm -hmm. uh, inside the body. Mm -hmm. This is a main, uh, real story about Masuri. Uh, Langkawi is a real uh, story. Like Masuri's prophecy, the island turned to ruins. Only after the duration of her curse passed did the forests come back to life. Is this really true? The guide informs me about another site to visit. Twenty years ago, the islanders tidily redecorated Masuri's grave. They believed in the old tale and rebuilt it in the hopes that nothing like this would happen again. I can feel their sincerity. I will now take a good look around the island that has not been exposed to outsiders for a long time. A friendly monkey family is the first to greet me. They must be used to the tourists. They're so carefree. They're so cute that I can't just pass them by. How cute he is eating them. Just then, one of the monkeys snatches the entire bag. This is a cave inside Kilim Karst Geoforest Park. It shows the geological characteristics of Langkawi. The height of the cave is 91 meters tall. Only as I get deeper inside do the true wonders of this cave start to reveal themselves. I was wondering what the bits of white stuck on the ceiling were. With a closer look, I can see they turn out to be shell mounds. This means this cave used to be part of the ocean long ago. The ceilings are packed with them. They don't bat an eye even at the sound of humans. It reminds me of Alfred Hitchcock's film, The Birds. It's fascinating rather than being scary. In Western culture, bats are connected with vampires and represent bad luck. But in Malaysia and the rest of Southeast Asia, it's the opposite. They maintain the ecosystem and raise the tourism revenue as well. This time, I'm going to go out to sea. 
This is where the river meets with the northern sea of Langkawi, and it is particularly blue and clear, which is due to this verdant jungle. It's like a jungle is sitting afloat on the ocean. Mangroves get their oxygen intake through their roots that are exposed above water. This way, they purify the water each time they breathe. It's a major reason how Langkawi was able to preserve its looks over hundreds of years. Many small islands form a cluster in Langkawi's Kilimkarst Geoforest Park. Each island has a different attraction and story behind it, making the tour that much more enjoyable. Yes, a little baby, like a pregnant lady. It's the far island in the middle. Interestingly, the mountain ridge looks like the profile of a pregnant woman who is lying down. This is a, what we call as a tasi dayang bunting. And then it's a bunting means uh, in English is pregnant. So you can see from uh, that view, it's a, a pregnant lady lay. And then you can see the face, breast, and also, I mean, the stomach with the baby, like a pregnant. And then this is one of the myths in Langkawi, and then track uh, some um, for a tourist to go for vacation. The island is surrounded by calm waters. You have to cross a small hill on the island in order to reach Dayang Bunting. It takes about 10 minutes on foot from the dock. A different landscape unfolds before me as I make my way around the lake. Sharp rocks sit between the path. It turns out that Dayang Bunting Lake was formed when the ceiling of a huge cave collapsed. This is Dayang Bunting Lake. The calm waters surrounded by dark green forests are relaxing. The view is gentle, giving me the illusion that I'm alone in a mysterious world. However, there are many others before me who have been captivated by this stunning view. A nearby school is here on a field trip. I'm going to soak my feet for a while to forget about the sweltering heat. At this moment, we come together as friends, transcending nationalities and generations. Kimchi. It's a valuable moment that this trip has bestowed upon me. <laughs> 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 
Before I know it, a red hue has descended over the ocean. This is a perfect moment for a romance movie or a family film. I'm going to create a memory for myself in my own way. I'd like to ride in Fellow Black. Yeah, welcome. Okay. Yeah, just come, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Now we should... I can do it! It takes about 20 minutes to tour the Langkawi Archipelago. I'm a little scared since this is my first time to try motor gliding, but my fear is short-lived. The view overlooking Langkawi is fantasy in itself. It has not been long since human hands have reached this wonderful natural environment. Gazing at the islands floating along the horizon, I can start to understand why people have been working so hard to preserve this place. The Langkawi Archipelago is called the Pearls of the Andaman. The numerous stories behind it seem to be whispering to me. My next destination is Penang, located approximately two hours by boat from Langkawi. The capital of Penang, Georgetown, is one-fourth the size of Seoul in Korea. It has a different atmosphere from other Southeast Asian cities. Diverse ethnicities settled in this city as it rose as a central commerce city between the East and the West. First, I'm going to a spot where I can get a full view of the city. The train has been designed to suit the angle of the incline. Unlike cable cars that hang from a wire, this train travels along straight lying rails on the ground. It's similar to the mountain trains in Switzerland, and it feels like I'm at an amusement park. Locals liken the speed of this train to the speed of Penang's development. The city was able to grow that much faster because various ethnic groups immigrated all at once as the region is free from typhoons, earthquakes and other natural disasters. This was a land of opportunity and a destination of longing for poor people from neighboring countries. This is why people call Penang a land bestowed with God's grace and a blessed land. I descend from Penang Hill to see the remnants of when the city was first established. Here. 이 요새를 처음으로 만들었던 프랜시스 라이트의 동상이 있네요. In 1786, British captain Francis Light first discovered the potential of Penang. 이 페낭 지역 자체가 18세기에 영국이 중국과 교역하기 위해서 최초로 말레이 반도에 진입했던 그런 곳이거든요. 그때 이 코널리스 요새는 중요한 전초기지였어요. The Europeans were aware of the significance of a seaport city early on and enforced numerous battles in order to take Penang into their hands. Here 
Only a few structures remain to remember what it was like 200 years ago. Having been a home for Penang for so many years, the sea lies almost too quietly. My journey jumps from one island to the next in search of a new world that can only be found on the Malay Peninsula. My final destination today is an island where Surat Thani, Thailand is located. Surat Thani is a harbor city in the northern Malay Peninsula and it borders the Gulf of Thailand. I'm heading for the island of Koh Phangan, which is three hours by boat from here. I hear they have a special festival once a month, and I'm going there solely out of curiosity to see it. My anticipation escalates when I see groups of tourists gathering around at the dock. The way the Songkran festival in April is famous for Koh Samui, evidently Koh Panyang is just as famous for its full moon party. Tourists from all over the world travel through the choppy sea with a single purpose, to reach a single island. What has led them here? On the boat is a mixture of excitement in seeking a new world and the quiet waiting of an important moment. So you know the moon in the sky. It just it just happens once a month. It's quite famous. You should come. Come with us. We'll get you drunk. It'll be fun. You'll love it. <laughs> and do the party tonight. <laughs> See you then, mate. Kopenyang is about 20 kilometers north of Koh Samui. The entire island is a tropical rainforest and has the look of a typical Southeast Asian vacation spot. Lila Beach on the southernmost tip of Kopenyang is famous for its fine soft sand. It's perfect for vacationers looking for a relaxing time in a quiet and peaceful atmosphere. Motorbikes are essential here. Just like most of the islands in Thailand, they're optimal modes of transportation among the young because it's easy to get around on them and rental fees are cheap. I don't have that there. Just one liter on motorcycle. One Just one. Today. Today. Uh, tonight, full moon party. Uh, full moon party. Yeah. We have many people. Too much, you know? They say there are about 3,000 motorbikes on the island, but not one is available for me. I want to take a rental bike. Oh, motorbike. See me that. Yeah. 
First, I'm getting on my windfall and taking a fun ride around Copenhagen. You can ride all around the island within an hour by taking a motorbike on the coastal road. It's a small island inhabited by 8,000 people living in the mountains and along the coast. Someone once said that a traveler who cannot meet eye to eye with nature is a mere foreigner. Thus, I should try finding myself among the winding coastal road that fluctuates like the trials of life. The island in the distance is my self-portrait. This is what those words seem to be telling me at this moment. At this moment, no words or explanation are necessary. My heart is already far out on that blue sea. This is Had Rin, a beach that extends for over one kilometer. At nightfall, it's where the full moon party will be held. When something is cliché, you have to enjoy it in the most stereotypical way. I refrain from going in the water since I have become an adult. But here, I can't just sit and watch. It's a fun time being one with the vast blue nature. This is paradise on earth, being able to enjoy freedom without anyone to interfere. Finally, a night more beautiful than day has arrived. The round full moon illuminates the night. Crowds have come to enjoy this single night that has been offered by the heavens. 30,000 people visit for the full moon parties alone. You gotta do another one for the camera. It isn't only the tourists who have waited for this day. It's high season for merchants who sell all sorts of colorful party items, as well as various Thai dishes. For the islanders and merchants who have traveled from Koh Samui, business is so lucrative that they live a month off of their one-day earnings.
The party starts at 9 o'clock. Fluorescent body painting is the most popular. It's 150 baht to get painted, which is about five U.S. dollars. I like this. The long awaited wild night has begun. As if by magic, the quiet island has been totally engulfed by the fever of youth. Their fervor transmits entirely unto me. The highlight of the all-night party is the fire show. The full moon parties started 23 years ago. Some foreigners gathered at a bungalow and had a bonfire. Word of mouth spread about this small gathering and more young people have been coming each year. Transcending the 200-year history, the Malay Peninsula continues to be a sought-after land and a new world for many. The verdant island is still there for those who come in search of fantastic memories and true respite.